वेलकम टू न्यूज लॉन्ड्री छोटा हफ्ता फॉर द फुल एपिसोड सब्सक्राइब बिकॉज इट इज बिहाइंड द पे वॉल एंड ओनली सब्सक्राइबर्स गेट एक्सेस टू अनकट कंप्लीट कॉन्टेंट न्यूज लॉन्ड्री हफ्ता इज आ वीकली रैप ऑफ ऑल दैट मेड द न्यूज ऑल दैट डिडेंट एंड ऑल दैट शुड हैव एंड ऑल दैट शुडेंट हैव वी अग्री वी डिसग्री विद क्रिटिक एंड ओकेजनली वी बीट इच अदर अप बट इट्स ऑल गुड फन सब्सक्राइब दिस इज अज लॉन्ड्री पॉडकास्ट एंड योर लिसनिंग टू एन एल हफ्ता अंग्रेज अपना लगान और न्यूज लॉन्ड्री अपना हफ्ता कभी नहीं छोड़ते आई एम मनीषा पांडे आई एम गोइंग टू बी योर होस्ट फॉर दिस वीक आई नो दैट सैड इन मेनी ऑफ यू बट अभिनंदन हैज बिन रियली बिजी दिस वीक एंड स्पेशली टुडे सो ही हैज बिन एबल टू जॉइन अस बट होपफुली ही बी बैक नेक्स्ट वीक टिल देन यू हैव टू बेयर विद अस यू हैव टू बेयर विद मी मोस्टली नॉट विद अस बिकॉज द रेस्ट ऑफ द पैनल इज ग्रेट बिफोर आई जम्प इन टू द न्यूज ऑफ द वीक एंड ऑल द डिस्कशन आई हैव अ कपल ऑफ अनाउंसमेंट्स टू मेक one is that we have the christmas week uh, which is upon us a time to gift things and some merry making so from 17 to 26 december we have a lot of offers uh, you know on our merchandise you can gift subscriptions to your friends and families we have some offers on our mugs on our soap sets on our nirvana masks so you can go to newslaundry.com/christmas-offer and you can see all the interesting things that we have that you can gift this christmas season We also have a new subscription plan. We have launched a subscription plan for twenty eight thousand rupees for three years. You get a discount of eight thousand rupees and a lot of free merchandise. So check that out and support us. You must have heard the CGI say this week that uh, there's no investigative reporting and all that, and we can go into that. But one of the big reasons is that reports, ground reports, investigative reports, uh, cost a lot of money. They're time in- time intensive. They're resource intensive. and at news laundry at least we'd only be able to do them if you support us and subscribe to news laundry so please check out our new game changer 3 year plan uh, we also have a new page for subscribers to send letters to our shows so if you want to write uh, a letter to us and if you want us to read it out then please go to newslaundry.com/podcast-letter and finally we also have an email if you want to do the old fashioned way of writing an email so you can write your emails on all our podcasts at podcasts at newslaundry.com on that note let me introduce our guests we have raman sir in the house with us hi anand vardhan who is with us in delhi after a very very long time welcome anand It's great to see you hello and jayashree joining us from madras hi always makes it a point to say madras and not chennai i've noticed It's forgivable. It's fine. <laughs> like we call Bombay, Good. not Mumbai. Like Bombay, not Mumbai, yeah. Or Calcutta, not Kolkata, I guess. And Umar is our guest of this week. Umar is a journalist. Yeah. Hi to everyone. Hi. Thank you for Good joining evening. us. Uh, he's based in Lucknow, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, I'm based in Lucknow. And you are the UP correspondent at the Hindu. Yes. And how long? Hindu. How long have you been with uh, the Hindu, Umar? Um, a more than a decade, you could oh, say. Oh, wow! And before that, around a decade, yeah. Maybe if you could round it up. And you've always been based out of Lucknow. Um, uh, no, I have been based out of Allahabad, Lucknow, and also I have covered Maharashtra for a while, out of Bombay. So you could say it's uh, mostly UP. Okay. So exciting time for you now. Two less than two months, you're going to have the state go to polls. So lots of political action happening in your state. So we should discuss some of that. Elections are around the corner, and I know that UP, being such a large state, most journalists often. don't really know what's happening or what is about to happen in an election i mean last i think the last time no one really knew that bjp would sweep the state like this so i just want uh, to get some color from you because you're in lucknow and you you know you know a bit of what's happening on the ground so three questions to you one on social media at least although there's some television news also which is covering this uh, but not as much i mean the prime minister's kashi inauguration got wall to wall full day coverage Uh, akhilesh comes and goes his rallies but it's not it doesn't get the kind of coverage it does but on social media at least there's some sort of a, i guess people who support akhilesh or you know his party workers have sort of tried to create a buzz around his rallies that they're very well attended and there's a swarm of people how do you assess these rallies do you think the crowd there is an indication of anything in terms of sp's uh, electoral chances i think in the age we live in the digital age where internet is cheap and there's access to mobile phones to everyone crowds have become a lesser parameter to judge popularity especially when it comes to months near the election but i feel that it's a minimum bare minimum that any party needs to do so akhilesh has so far by uh, throwing up the numbers and showing his strength he has at least claimed that i am the challenger and i can uh, dethrone you i can put up a fight 
had he not got the crowd, had he not got the support on the ground in terms of the rallies, then we could have speculated that he's not in the fight. He's the fight. Mein hai. Like, mukable mein hai, as they say here. This time, there is a very strong belief that there is a tucker, that there is a fight. Although the numbers are still very different and it's not going to be easy because there's almost a double jump that he needs to do and the BGP really needs to suffer heavy anti-incumbency and accolade needs to create a wave in favor of him. So in case he does that, that'd be really remarkable. And I feel that that'll be next to only the 2014 elections because there also, uh, that was a very tectonic election. It wasn't just a victory. It shook the entire state and it actually changed a lot of equations and calculations that we had assumed to be true for a long period. One of the narratives around Kashi has been over the last one uh, week that the BJP has done for Kashi what no other government could do. It's uh, Of course, it's revamped the Kashi Vishwanath corridor, linking the temple to the Ghat. And I mean, I guess you can't deny the fact that there's been infrastructural improvement. But how fair is this charge of other governments not doing enough for Kashi? And how do you, how do you view the whole Kashi redevelopment plan, uh, especially vis-a-vis the elections that are going to come? Yeah, I feel uh, the Kashi Vishwanath corridor is not just a game plan for Banaras because Banaras is a BJP stronghold and BJP will win it no matter what. Okay. Even if the Samajwadi party comes to power tomorrow, the BJP will still clean sweep Banaras uh, because there is no um, other ideology that comes into play there. The larger message is to appeal to the Hindus across the country as well as that in UP and in particular in Purvanchal because both Yogi and Modi have their political, you could say their uh, bastions now, because Modi is now from Banaras in terms of his constituency. They are both from Purvanchal. So whatever positive energy they want to generate and spread and circulate across the state has to come from this area. In comparison to t- uh, 2014, the BJP's campaign was based from Muzaffarnagar and the West, because they wanted a negative campaign to dethrone the Samajwadi Party. Now they have a campaign to retain what they have. So they, they need a positive campaign that's upbeat. There's a lot of symbolism. So Purvanchal is the head of that. So Gurakpur and uh, Varanasi are the two centers of this area. And there's no better way to do it uh, uh, than to symbolism around Lord Shiva. Do you want to come in, Anand? Uh, see, uh, even in 2014, when Mr. Modi chose Varanasi as his parliamentary constituency, BJP's strategies, a strategy was that it would have cumulative effect in Eastern UP because it's not only about Varanasi. It uh, the adjoining mm. districts uh, will gain from the momentum created there. Also, Kashi Vishwanath is the centerpiece of uh, Prime Minister's uh, parliamentary constituency, means uh, as a tourist attraction for its spiritual or religious value. So that kind of buzz there is projected to have a domino effect. So uh, that his second uh, uh, was uh, the question about promoting the non-Yadab uh, OBC icons and even other ma- marginalized caste icons. So it has been uh, RSS uh, work in progress for a number of years. Like um, social scientist Badri Narayan in his work, uh, The Republic of Hindutva has pointed out, like Suhail Dev, Suhail Dev, uh, a promotion of Suhail Dev, which now even SP in its alliances is trying to co opt in its uh, rival alliance. Now, uh, that uh, developmental uh, project with uh, local icons, caste identities, now this all combined as an electoral package uh, sounds good on paper. My impression of uh, PM's rally, I think uh, Yogi had come to Delhi and that was the time when the political survey that every government in power, any political party in power, they do it. So uh, through the intelligence bureau, uh, which has got a political bureau, political uh, desk. So basically it was very clearly told that Yogi on his own cannot uh, you know, win the UP election. Western UP was in pretty bad shape because of the farmers. And even otherwise, Yogi has not become so popular that he will. There is uh, a very strong, uh, you know, current of anti-incumbency. So 
प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स यू नो शो एट काशी दैट शोज इट वेरी क्लियरली बिकॉज ही डिड एवरीथिंग अलोन सी एम योगी वॉज नॉट देयर वेन ई वॉज डूइंग पूजा सी एम योगी वॉज आई मीन चीफ मिनिस्टर योगी वॉज अवे and oh, and like and at pra- night when they went inspecting on the uh-huh. railway station prime minister was the star i mean first of all he is going to be the star campaigner uh, in the coming elections i mean caste definitely play a very major role but that comes into picture when they you know identify the candidates and uh, all those things happen but at the moment uh, i mean the first impression that comes from the kashi is that pm is going to play a very major role as a campaigner second thing that they set uh, this the entire thing he set an agenda i mean the bjp has set an agenda about uh, you know good hindu and bad hindu mm-hmm. and each political party has fallen for it so so who is bigger uh, hindu than uh, you know the bjp i mean that's what and and it was a trap and all parties are falling for it for example when the pm said that we have done this so i think akhilesh was the first one to jump and said that we had started ha, the corridor they said that we sanctioned we, the money uh, for it how which true is true. that no is which correct? is no which is true what happened that uh, this navneet sahgal was you know side track during akhilesh time he was given he was made secretary of principal secretary tell our audience who navneet sahgal is because navneet sahgal is right know. now the media advisor to the bjp government yogi government and he is an is officer and uh, he in fact always used to be i mean his quality is that he is always always used to be in good books of the political parties uh, whether it is uh, mayawati or uh, for that matter in mulayam singh yadav he had a very important role and uh, radna singh he had a very important role and now with yogi he is got a very important role but for a very short time uh, with akhilesh he fell out and he was given he was made some principal secretary or secretary of dharmarth karke there is a department in uh, in up okay now dharmarth mein the only thing which is the kashi vishwana temple okay so it was it was navneet sahgal's proposal to akhilesh ki boss let us develop this corridor so politically you are going to win the race okay you can get uh, hindus on your side uh and and uh, we uh, so 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 akhilesh had sanctioned at that time had given around 9 10 crore rupees mm. so this was the beginning but but it became better i mean it uh, it was actualized it was implemented of course during the bjp yeah, time modi completely captured that then. bjp time yeah, BJP. Nee, but more importantly yeah it is a very it is a massive pilgrimage site so in isolation its development by a government would not raise eyebrows i mean the government spending money on it but i mean you view it as a move by a government that wants to be of the hindus for the hindus by the hindus so therefore everything that they do towards that image would raise eyebrows so i agree with what ramansa said i think um, they have managed to play the hindu versus who is the better hindu card very well also from the my understanding of it i think a lot of the commentary that they're using in their speeches is very geared towards the kind of narrative they're setting so i think during the kashi inauguration i think modi had said um whenever an aurangzeb invades a shivaji will rise hmm. during that airport inaugural also uh, there were some references to followers of jinnah who had triggered riots in the past and uh, the deputy chief minister also had said something recently about people wearing skull caps grabbing land under the previous government so i think for the bjp everything else that they do in terms of development welfare handling of covid their failures in terms of demonetization none, none of that really matters this narrative is what wins them elections at the end of the day or uh, i think that is what we're increasingly seeing so this is what we're seeing right now as well yeah i i mean i when i saw the coverage i mean of course as news and you know we are news since episode is on this they you can't find faults with this because i mean to my mind uh, this was a place that had to be developed and a- any government yeah. would do it it's a no brainer basically but then when you see the kind of coverage the television media did from morning to night it was beyond north korean to my mind i mean minute to minute wo dekho pm ne dubki ma- and dd actually went to the extent of saying ki unme shakti ka sanchar hota hai aur brahmand se prime minister mein shakti aati hai aur us shakti se pure desh mein shakti jaati hai just to translate that the Prime Minister is channeling the energy of the sun, and it's you know uh, kind of 
it's it's oh it's invigorated him and it's invigorating the nation i mean he was literally like a god figure across channel so then and all these things are planned i mean it can't be that the prime minister is doing this and you know the media is beyond his control i mean this is all a planned thing of how dd shows it how private news channels show it i think one more thing which i found very interesting was he's trying to tell them that okay i am willing to negotiate with you but i think the more immediate reason for that is to allow bjp to go and campaign in the western parts of the state where hostility would have been very high if the government was adamant at sticking to its narrative now at least the bjp people can go to the constituencies and not get thrashed and not have uh, untoward incidents because if modi goes there in january and they were still protesting they could have in any incident like a lathi charge or a black flag or stone you can just imagine the kind of consequences that would have for the bjp if there's an incident in western up in a charged up environment that would have bad that would have a big impact on the rest of the state in terms of the uh, narrative you know they want to have a positive campaign because they are in power they want to have a positive campaign that everything is fine nobody is complaining so they cannot afford that raman sir do you think tenis days are number or <laughs> you think he'll carry on no i say that uh, umar has said it already uh his father will remain political i mean he will be there so long as he is politically relevant and uh, the issue has gone out of uh, the bjp's hand now i mean the the sit report has told in as many words that this was deliberately done it was a murder it was a it is a case of murder not a negligent uh, you know driving so uh, so they're not shielding him either though I mean, you we know that SIT reports can be sometimes. No, they were shielding initially but, because but after the SIT it's... report, now the new charges have come in. Mm. Initially, they were uh, shielding him also, so the the new charges were not there. The the case of murder, the attempt to murder, they have just come in. Okay, and and also they were uh, you know hiding many things. I mean, they were there was a death of a journalist also, which they were saying that the farmers have. you know killed, killed him. him yeah so now i think uh, with judiciary intervening i mean especially the supreme court the case has gone out of their hand but still he is politically relevant because of his caste so so as as uh, omar says that this no, no swapping is happening right now there is no one to replace him in that area so theek hai they will keep him uh so long as his political relevant that's it and do you want to add anything to it or should we move to bcci and you can give us a full low down on everything that's happening there no see here uh, i think uh, in one of the earlier episodes i had uh, said that uh, after the crackdown on say criminal gangs headed by brahmins like vikash dube or something or, or even before that with the choice of mr yogi adityanath the there is a brahmin lobby in uh, up politics which is uh, i would not say hostile to bjp but feels uh, a bit uh, distant from it and uh, unlike uh, say neighboring state of bihar the upper castes is still have significant numbers electorally in up other obc and sc of course are larger in number but here they matter more in bihar upsetting upper castes I can, uh, despite it you can carry on an electoral campaign but here brahmins raj and thakurs rajputs uh, they matter so that is one thing but also there is a question of political liability that uh, the political judgment uh, depends on deciding that what's a, an asset and a liability that is the the point where bjp2 has has to take a call this guy kohli being delhiite i mean he is is very aggressive i mean he should understand that there is a different captain for white ball and different captain for red ball so if you are giving up t20 so obviously i mean of course it was uh, it hurt his ego when when he was told just 90 minutes ago that odi you are not going to uh, do it i mean that is basically it has hurt his ego but i think he should have anticipated it if he's not taking t20 but yes uh, gangli is wrong that they had asked they had requested him not to leave that was wrong but uh, he should have also understood that he cannot represent odi anymore and he would not should not have gone you know public with this uh, his statement uh, umar and jayshree do you want to add anything to this do you guys follow umar do you follow cricket 
are you following this controversy and you um, have do you, ha- do you have any gossip or hot cricket. takes <laughs> <laughs> i used to follow cricket i was also a player oh you were but but i think uh, last few years i think more than that i have not really tracked it, but i do watch once in a while whenever there's a buzz on social media that something great has happened hmm. so i will surely read on read up on this <laughs> Jeshi yeah, I I'm the worst person to contribute to this conversation this is where I should confess that I think about 3 years ago I muted the word Virat Kohli on my t- Twitter timeline so why what was I he doing I have absolutely no idea like what is happening though I mean as a gut instinct I would automatically side against uh Jeshi any run organization but I do want to ask Raman sir like what is the gossip then about specifically what beef exists between Virat Kohli and that Sharma No no uh, Sharma uske beech ka kya luch no, no, hai No no Sharma Sharma had given Rohit that uh, Rohit Kohli Sharma Kohli said today we no, no problem Sharma had given that report and... that they were forced to attend Ravi Shastri's वो तो अलग हो गया बट विराट एंड रोहित शर्मा के बीच में हां सो दैट्स व्हाट ना विराट हैड टेकन द एंटायर टीम सो विराट वाज इट्स इट्स अ दे ऑल आर मेन ऑफ इगोस आई मीन दे 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 बेसिकली सो 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 दैट इज व्हाट इज हैपनिंग राइट नाउ इफ यू फॉलो सी क्रिकेट गॉसिप एंड दिस कॉल अप मीडिया देयर इज अ सी अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ planted or imagined rift between the two so one interesting one is that uh, once uh, hmm, rohit sharma unfollowed virat kohli on instagram <laughs> so so that was a this, this, this is a gossip that i no no it, it, it was a fact <laughs> it was a fact but what he meant by unfollowing i don't know uh, so um, i think uh, muting is the Op- I, I don't know whether it's an option on Instagram. <laughs> I I usually mute people, so and uh, when I regret following them, I mute them. All of you listening in, the Chota Hafta do subscribe so you can listen to the entire Hafta. We will see you again next week with the Hafta. Till then, subscribe, pay to keep news free because when the public pays, the public is served, and advertisers pay. Advertisers are served. Thank you. Goodbye. All the News Laundry podcasts are available on Stitcher, iTunes, and any other podcast platform. Please subscribe to News Laundry. Help us keep news independent. To catch all our podcasts on news, pop culture, current affairs and sport, visit newslaundry.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Sunli Africa Mufat Khoro, not to brag or anything, but News Laundry Hafta features in the top 50 in the world on SoundCloud in the news and politics category for podcasts. So do subscribe and see what you're missing because when the public pays the public is served when advertisers pay advertisers are served subscribe help keep news independent and free all news laundry podcasts are available on iTunes and Stitcher and any other podcast platform